Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He, Luke didn't get his cookie. <laughs> you know, one response about what Easter is, it reminds me that uh, somebody asked that of a young child and they raised their hands. Ooh, I know, I know, I know. The Easter bunny comes out of its hole. If it sees its shadow, there's six more weeks of winter. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I love escape artists because I like to try to figure out how they did what they do. And I find those that use the water death escape rather bone chilling, whether they're kind of wrapped in a, you know, in a, some kind of a bag and chains or in a trunk or whatever, and then submerged in water it frightens me to death because I can't hold my breath very long at all. It brings out that sense of terror <clears throat> as well as a sense of amazement. You know, my reaction is that, you know, I can, I can hardly watch. You know, I can hardly stand to see it. At the garden tomb where Jesus was buried, the women gathered to anoint his lifeless body and they leave in terror and amazement. We find that only in Mark's gospel. Do they think that <clears throat> what they had witnessed was the aftermath of a great escape artist? Were they afraid of that young man dressed in the white robe? Were they amazed at the prospect of seeing a messenger of God? Were they frightened by the empty tomb and what it might mean that Jesus has overcome death? Were they amazed at the message of God's messenger, administrative assistant, who says, hey, you just missed the boss, but if you hurry, you can catch him? Were they afraid that no one would believe their story of this encounter with this man in the white robe? You know, we probably will never know exactly what gave the foundation to their being terrified and amazed. We just know that it was an extreme reaction that seized them. It was one of those experiences that you kind of have to live through in order to understand the whole gamut or spectrum of emotions that, that goes along with it. And that's exactly what the gospel is asking us to do. To receive the good news this day by living through it ourselves. Jesus crucified, died, buried. Is not to be found or experienced in the bowels of death, but in the lives of the living. He has been raised. He is not here, says the man. You know, on the one hand, that should terrify us. Because if death is not our final sanctuary from the will of God, if God can reach even into death and grab us there, then that whole sense of hiding from God, the Adam and the fig leaf syndrome, so to speak, just doesn't work. And what does it mean if we can't hide thoughts, words, and deeds from God? For most of us, that would be the basis for at least fear, if not downright terror. But on the other hand, it should also be an eye-opening sense of amazement for us. The same God who sees us in darkness offers us to come out into the light by his grace. Better than a screensaver that keeps us from burning the image of guilt and sin across the brow of our lives, we have a living Savior. We are invited to share Christ's victory over death just as he said it would happen. 
without tricks, without illusions. And we may want to know how did he do it. But the most important aspect for us is that he did do it for us and for our future. The women didn't tell anyone, Mark's gospel records, and that's understandable because they still didn't know what the encore performance was going to be, whether they could share this story of this man dressed in a white robe as he alludes to remind them that they would meet Jesus yet in Galilee. But we do. We know. And hopefully knowing doesn't decrease that sense of amazement, but only increases it in us. I live. You live. Because Christ lives in us. And that cannot be erased by death. That's the Easter story, and we are Easter people. People of the terrifying and amazing resurrection of Jesus Christ. And each day as Easter people, we are enlivened by that terrible and amazing message. He has been raised. He is here in each and every one of us. Christ is risen. Not all of you were sleeping. Amen.